Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Certain bodies of water are much more conducive to growing big smallmouths, primarily due to the size and abundance of forage species. On this week's episode, Hook and Look returns to the Northern Promised Land in hopes of spotting gorillas swinging from a chandelier. Indian River, baby. Vibrant colors of fall abound amidst a radiant blue backdrop as the Hook and Look crew works their way north to Mullet Lake. Nonetheless, a change in conditions is beginning to unfold in the heart of Indian River, Michigan. You definitely need to be a smallaholic to do this. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Today, Kim and his good friend and local guide, Marcel Veenstra, prepare for a challenging ride that is certain to dampen more than just their spirits. Can you imagine what it's like outside there once we get out I, of the gate? I, I know. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge if we can do it. And then if the fish are going to cooperate in it. But this is what we put up with this time of year. You know, you never know what's going to happen late in the fall. Somali fishing, the decisions you make. That's should right. I stay or should I go? But the payoff could be big time. We're just trying to get out of the shallow water here. Marcel, are you crazy? Yep. Crazy about smally fishing. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> this is what October smallmouth fishing in the north is like. Unbelievable. You know what's nice? Today we're going to have the whole lake to ourselves. That's right. <laughs> You gotta love it. You really gotta love it. <laughs> so, in the face of adversity, two seasoned smallmouth fanatics charge forward with incessant determination. Yet prevail, they did not. Well, that sucked. But when you only have a couple of days to put a show together, you give it your all with what you're dealt with. So we made an attempt, and I will say this, the only thing that worked harder than Marcel and I did that day was the bilge pump. And if you think it looked rough on Marcel and I, Danny was the one who really took a beating, trying his best to capture the action. Fortunately for all of us, the next morning offered a ray of hope and a window of opportunity we needed to capitalize on quickly. Can't wait to cast, can't wait to cast. Is that fish in the front? That's looking like fish, yeah. right? Yeah, probably is. It's okay to take a kiss backwards, isn't it? Yeah. And no, I, I mean, well, sometimes, I mean sometimes that's the way they want it. They want it with, you know, with the current. Yeah. Sometimes they're facing into the current. That's why you I mean, never obviously know. The, the lighting is bright to catch one on this side right now. There's one. There we go. <laughs> Told you the lighting was right. Sure, you you wait for my cast to be way out there. Good job, Marcel. <laughs> Come on. Oh, look at that giant. Oh <laughs> my god. <Yeah. laughs> Umbrella, the Umbrella rig. rig does it, baby. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Good job. Hang on one second. Look at this oh, fish. Man. Oh my God, the he ate the umbrella rig. Oh my goodness. Let me help you out here. <laughs> that is a dandy, Marcel. Uh, the wind. You gotta love it, man, when you get him like this big fat tank like that. 
the wind lied down enough this morning. Good deal. Look at that. Pig. You gotta love these northern Michigan giants. <laughs> awesome, that, that's awesome, why awesome. I, I, that's why I'm up here so often. It's just, man, I can't stay away from these things. Well, you know where to find them here. I mean, this isn't a lake for numbers, but this is no. what, that's what Mullet Lake's all it, about. It, and Yep. I mean, hard, it, it, you know, it's hard work. I mean, you gotta endure the weather. Unfortunately, some days it's too rough to really, you know, work it right. right. But man, today we have a nice day, a little bit of breeze. But this is the reason we and, do it. Yep, that tank. Good job, good job. Awesome. Stay tuned. There's more Indian River tanks coming right up. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seagar, trust Seagar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. Deep Blue Coffee, dive in. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Welcome back to Mullet Lake and the fisherman-friendly community of Indian River, Michigan, home to gorilla-sized smallmouth bass. Kim Stricker and his guest, Marcel Veenstra, are presenting a school of swim and shiners on a tour-grade titanium umbrella rig, retrieving it close to the bottom. There's one right there. Oh, man, he slammed it. He slammed it. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, umbrella ring. Oh, another pig. Oh, another. Another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is cool. This is cool. Look at that. Oh, he got, uh, he got the trailing one, the one in the back. What that is on this tour grade tungsten um, umbrella rig is a swim and shiner. That's striking swim and shiner. And this actually comes in a kit. This is an umbrella rig kit that has five jig heads. These are quarter ounce. Five jig heads and five swim and shiners. <laughs> and Indian River, baby. Oh, you know it. Another beautiful looking fish. Look at that thing. Marcel. <laughs> We struggled yesterday. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the weather, it was a weather-related thing, though. Yeah. I, I believe if we could have gotten out here, fished it thoroughly, we would have caught him yesterday, but... Gale warnings it's a, it's a, and everything it's, it's yesterday. A new day. You know it. They live here, folks. All right. Good fish. You know it. Get back down there, you beautiful, chunky, fall, small mouth. <laughs> this is feels fun. Good. It feels so good to see him pull this it on the string. This is fun. But you run that risk of the weather. That's the bad part of this time of year, but ah, it's rewarding when it Look at here, look at here. Yep. Market fish. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Another pig. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, look at those jumps. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with this. Is there? Look at how fat that Man, thing that is. That one is, looks like a football. Oh my God. It's although it's bigger. <laughs> it's a fall time, that is a fall time football, my God. No kidding. You're hooked in the net, you know. Yep. The umbrella freak, baby. Look at that chunk. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, good job, Marcel. Now, oh how many, God. how many days a year do you come up to Indian River to uh, guide? I come up to this area probably about maybe thirty to forty days a year. Wish I could come up a lot more. But you but, spend the rest of the time down yep, on Lake St. Clair. Down on Lake St. Clair, yep. But. I come up here for, because this is what you can, you know, you can catch fish like this. Awesome. There's some phenomenal fishing here. Oh my God. I mean, right now with each, 
you know, with each cast, I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm letting it sink to the bottom sometimes, and I keep it going slow, making contact with the bottom. And then there's another cast, I'll try to get it just above the bottom, and then every once in a while, I'll throw it a little higher in the water column. But I think it's critical to figure out, you know, how the fish are relating to the bait and how they want to strike the bait. There are certain times it's just one way or the other that they'll hit directly off that bottom or they'll hit, you know, a little bit higher in the water column. And that's something that we have to figure out each day to make it work. God, you wonder, I mean, how many six pounders are down there. You, know, you wonder what's down there. Well, I'm yeah. going to take a look at it later. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that's another thing that actually excites me big time. It's just knowing that you're going to go down there, take a look and tell me what's down there. <laughs> well, we'll take a look with the oh, aqua view. You'll be surprised what you see on oh. that. So we positioned ourselves over one of the key deals at a depth of 22 feet, dropped the camera, and were immediately awed by not only the number, but the average size of these Mullet Lake Smallies. They were all tanks. And they were casually wandering around the rocky bottom, not necessarily parked and pointed in one direction. We then moved off into 25 feet of water, and you can see the bottom change. Yet, we confirmed that this was indeed a transient scenario. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll dive into this subject a little more thoroughly. Coming up, we'll get up close and personal with these giants. Stay with us. It's like they're the biters are right around the edge of that ridge, it seems like. You know, they have that escape right to that deep water. They drop mm -hmm. right off of the ledge like it's nothing. And they, you know, we wonder where they go to. I think they just suspend out over that open water. And then all of a sudden when they show up, they're here. They eat and then they, you know, you wonder why they stop, they just go back. So what's the attraction of this particular area? And why do these fish grow so darn big? To answer both those questions, we had to delve a little deeper. Upon Kim and Danny's close inspection of the bottom structure, they quickly discovered that the rocks here were literally covered with round gobies. Mullet Lake is connected to the Great Lakes via Michigan's largest inland waterway, a series of rivers and lakes forming a navigable route for small craft between Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. It's through this recreational thoroughfare that the invasive bottom dwellers migrated altering the food chain in its wake. Based on Hook and Look's underwater surveillance, it's no surprise that the schools of hungry smallies come here to feed. And it stands to reason why the bass are striking the umbrella rig as Kim and Marcel work it along the bottom and not at mid-water column. It's also become quite apparent that they do indeed live, feed, and grow here, and in a big way. These are all four pound plus average fish. But what would you guess this one weighs? Talk about a tank. Resembling little sausages, gobies are a highly prolific and nutritious forage species and present a seemingly endless buffet for ravenous smallmouths that often gorge themselves, perhaps a little too much. Would you look at that fat fatty? Hopefully for this glutton, what goes in one end will soon come out the other. <laughs> what a difference a day makes. 24 little hours. That'd be a good song. Oh, oh God. Is he on? He, he's on. He's on. He's coming at me. He's coming at me. <laughs> Oh, where you at, baby? Another, oh, look at that. Another, another cute. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch. Right in the basket. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Gotta love it. Do you like that little, that little swimming shiner? He saw a whole school of swimming shiners coming at him. And he Man, nothing help. better to throw than the umbrella rig when they're feeding. <laughs> that is great. Oh my great god. Great stuff. You know it. Good job. <laughs> Let's get out and get another one. 
They're pulling up there to feed, are they not? That's what, That's exactly what they're doing. They're coming up there eating and then they go away. Then they, and, they're, and you gotta be here while they're feeding. That's, that's the thing, you could leave, they could come up and eat and you can come back and think the fish never came here. But they're, <laughs> you know how it is, you see yeah. it. It's, I think if you commit to a spot like this in a day, you're gonna, you're gonna be, have a good yeah. looking live well. And we know the big ones come here and that's, yeah, that's, that's we're looking oh. for the, man. Not necessarily looking for the numbers. We want the big ones. No. Last guess. That's the person we catch. Them. I got one. There you go. <laughs> Did I call that? <laughs> Unless, of course, we catch one. <laughs> big and big and big and big and. Feels good. <laughs> Gotta love this. This is awesome. Oh! <laughs> How's that for a catch? <laughs> yes. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. That's Marcel, a good Marcel, that is great. Great, man. Woo. That is incredible. Umbrella no, rig does it again, buddy. No kidding. Yep. Oh, it fell right out. Oh too. my God! <laughs> Did you? We see? may have gotten a little lucky on that, but still, look at the size of that thing. Did you that see is... how that rocketed out of the water Goodness. at the boat? Yep. I mean, I think I just had a little bit of pressure on that fish, and it just followed through. And yeah. boy, oh boy, uh, uh, uh. that was a good catch. Yep. Every I... one of these smallies in the fall so far, I mean today, have been really big fish. I mean, we're catching all fish that are between three and a half and five pounds. I mean, they're all solid, thick giants. That's what lives Gotta here. Gotta love it. To stay connected with Hook and Look, like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. Evan Rood, introducing the all new Evan Rood E-Tech G2. Cush it, world's most comfortable rod butt. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. Strike King's Tour Grade Titanium Umbrella Rig provides anglers with an amazing bait ball presentation that is virtually unbreakable. The titanium wires have a smaller diameter than steel and other metals and are very responsive, giving an outstanding level of action to the school of swim baits. The use of a heavy action rod, seven to eight feet in length, is essential for casting the rig properly. Kim also recommends a minimum of 65 pound test Seaguar Smackdown braided line. You'll need the strength and zero stretch properties of braid to empower you to pull free of the occasional snag. When it gets rough like it did yesterday, a lot of times when I'm with clients, I have to really bail out off of the main lakes, go to some of the smaller lakes in the area. And you have some outstanding fishing on a lot of the smaller no-name lakes, which makes this you know, really, really cool around here. And I like them places. I mean, it's really neat being on some of them small bodies of water and seeing some different things. This area is a great place to be, man. It's awesome. Got Fish, one. there you go. Fish on. <laughs> oh, my God. Real my line. This is, a, this is a good one, I think. <laughs> oh, my line's over here. <laughs> it gets crazy. Let me get that net. Ooh. This is a six pounder. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is a tell giant. Me, tell me this ain't exciting. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's a giant around. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good oh, job, man. Marcel. That is a tank right there. Ooh, there's a... Look at that thick that fish is. Indian River. Oh, man. Look at how he ate that thing. <laughs> it, it was weird. We had just, just now, going over a big wad of bait fish, 
we threw it out there, made a long cast, brought it back towards the boat, and this thing whaled it. That is one big, solid Good. Northern Michigan Smalley. Again, <laughs> man, what a day today. I want to thank Marcel for toughing it out and getting the job done. Hey, if you're interested in catching an average of quality size smallmouths, you need to treat yourself and come fish the lakes around Indian River, Michigan. Not only does this region grow giants, this is without a doubt a fisherman friendly community offering a variety of accommodations to suit your needs. Conventional hotels with pool and plenty of parking, clean mom and pop owned motels who personally go out of their way to cater to their guests comfortable cabins, some even riverside with boat docking and boat rental. You can find a map and an entire accommodations listing on the Indian River Tourist Bureau website. So check it out and check in. And hey, tell them Hook and Look sent you. On our next episode, we head to South Carolina's Lake Kiwi. It's early December and the fish are scattered, but there's one thing for sure, they can all be caught on a jig head worm. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tell your friends to hook and look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.